Hey everybody, Rich with PCC. Hey, I wanted to talk to you today about drive-based safety. Uh, there's a, a lot of functionalities that are kind of misperceived out there and, and how the implementation works. So just want to clarify a little bit of that uh, for you today. So uh, I want to co cover three main topics. Uh, first of all, some of the basic safety functions that currently exist, uh, how the different implementations could be handled, and then also some of the value that the Siemens Drives portfolio brings to the table uh, when it comes to the implementation of safety. So when it comes to the, the, the basic safety functions first, uh, the three most common that we see uh, uh, the one by far is safe torque off. Uh, we also see a bit of safe stop one or SS1 and then also safe brake control. Uh, you'll hear that referred to sometimes as just the acronyms, so STO, SS1, SBC. Uh, but what do those mean? So first of all, STO or safe torque off is simply the ability for the drive uh, from a control reliable perspective to shut down the IGBTs and stop sending enough energy to the motor to allow that, that uh, shaft to rotate anymore. Typically when a, an STO is initiated with a drive uh, that's controlling a motor, the motor will freewheel to a stop. So you're basically letting loose of that shaft, you're stopping the IGBTs from functioning, and that uh, motor is not receiving any power anymore uh, to turn that shaft and, and rotate that shaft any longer. Uh, safe stop one is a bit of a variant from STO. Uh, the difference is with a safe stop one, first the drive ramps down the voltage, so it ramps down its power output uh, to, the, to the motor, and then it goes into an STO status, uh, dis disengaging the IGBTs. Now, why would that be helpful? Uh, well, maybe we have a situation where we have a high inertial load that's going to spin for a long, long time if we don't ramp it down in speed before we initiate the STO. So a safe stop one in that case, we ramp it down to a to a slower speed and then we do the STO uh, to, uh, to shut down the power uh, to that motor. Uh, safe brake control is exactly as it's described uh, in the acronym. Uh, so we are, from a monitored perspective, we are monitoring the control of a mechanical brake on the motor and, and handling that control uh, safely. Again, control reliably. Uh, so those are the three uh, basic ones. There are a bunch of extended functions that are available, uh, both from Siemens and other manufacturers. Not going to get into that today, uh, but uh, the, the basic ones are, are probably 80-90% of what we typically see in applications. When it comes to the implementation of drive-based safety, there's basically two different routes that you can go. First of all, you could hardwire it. So traditionally, you're gonna take the output of maybe a safety relay or an output of a safety PLC, and you're gonna wire that into terminals on the drive. And you're gonna trigger that STO uh, you know, via those terminals. Uh, the other way to handle it is via the network. So you know, now we're gonna take a, a safety PLC and we are going to, to, to read the status information from the drive, uh, from both a control and a safety pr perspective, and then we're also gonna be able to initiate those safety functions over the network as well. So two different routes that we can go there. Uh, you know, obviously, network-based safety is, is becoming more and more popular uh, as, as more and more products support that kind of functionality, which kind of brings me to then the Siemens value when it comes to the Synamics product portfolio uh, you know, when we talk about hardwired versus network, you can absolutely do both uh, on, on just about every drive that Siemens offers uh, in their portfolio. But obviously there's a huge advantage to reducing your wiring, reducing your startup time, if all we have to do is connect an ethernet cable to that drive versus hardwire something from a, you know, an output on a safety PLC or a safety relay or something like that. So when we think about being able to implement that on a network, we're really going to save ourselves some soft costs with regards to the, the, you know, the installation and the startup time of that drive. Uh, there's no extra cost to this functionality. Uh, I see several manufacturers out there that sell extra boards and, and, and things like that to be able to, to add safety to a drive. That is not the case in, you know, when it comes to the Synamics portfolio. The, the basic safety functions are built into the drives and you know, again, you have the choice of either implementation. You, you pick which way you want to go. It's not that you have to buy a specific drive or a specific module uh, to implement that functionality. And, and as I've said a few times, this this is consistent throughout almost the whole portfolio uh, at Siemens. You know, whether we're talking about uh, a, v a VFD like the G120 that I have here, or whether we're talking about a, a servo controlled solution with maybe an S120 or an S210, all of these drives have all of these functions built into them. It's not an added cost. You can save a ton of wiring and really simplify your, your drive-based uh, safety control uh, for your application. Again, I don't see that 
consistent throughout the market. I see a lot of manufacturers that have the STO functionality. They have the STO terminals built onto the drive, but you have to hardwire it. Maybe it's networkable, maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it's networkable only for certain, um, certain variants of a particular drive family. Uh, you know, whereas that's where Siemens kind of knocks it out of the ballpark in, in applying this to just about their whole drive portfolio. So hopefully that clears some things up for you today with regards to drive-based safety. Give me a ring if you have any questions and we can expand upon the topic. Thanks a lot.